This is a Samsung RSH1 American style fridge freezer with the twin doors and today we're going to show you how to fit the modification sensor kit. Firstly you need to remove the water bottle just two screws hold it on once you've got it slackened off the water bottle will just lay in the bottle of the bottom of the fridge. There we go. Now we need to remove the back panel, and there's a couple of vents there you need to take off. Under the vents, there's a couple of screws. four screws in total looks like we've got one that doesn't want to come out the screws only go into plastic so it's easy to thread um, to strip the threads in the screw hole so if you've got a screw that's turning but not coming out just gently do what we're doing now and that ease the back panel away and little bit of jiggling and the back panel exposes the electrical plugs there at the top unplug those and lift the panel away just give us a second there's the back of the back panel and the fan motor, the drain hull, there's the fan motor there, just point out the drain hull and the drain hull for the fan, that's it. Part of the modification is the black headed sensor that you can see there needs to be moved over to the refrigeration tube there and it requires a new sensor because the existing one wires aren't long enough. This sensor on the RSH1 is white and we're about to do that now and we'll show you how to do it. So unplug, there's the plugs, so unplug the sensor, take the existing sensor off just tucked into a little white securing clip there's a tie wrap there to uh, to undo and that's the existing sensor removed we need to fit the new one on now I'll plug it in, thread your cable across, the sensor comes with a new clip, put the sensor head into the clip and then clip the hole onto the new location and that's as simple as that is. Make sure the wiring is neat and tidy and isn't going to interfere with anything else. Okay, this is the position of the new sensor and if I just pan out a bit and the wiring across over to the plug. The reason we do this is the modification prevents ice buildup on the refrigeration tube where you've just fitted the new sensor. So this modification is to stop that ice. Part of this modification um, you may notice ice on these vents being pointed out and if you've got ice on your back panel there you need this modification doing. Right, on this RSH1 we need to uh, point out the defrost heater. It's an L-shaped heater with two thermal trips, one on each line of the heater, live and neutral, and it goes to a plug just in that little bank there. We're going to unplug it and do a continuity resistance check 
on the element to check that it's okay. If yours passes this test, you don't need to replace it. And we're looking for 360, and if I just zoom in there, 369.367. So that's a good heater. This unit doesn't need a new heater. We just like to point out the thermal devices and we'll just unclip the top one and on this machine it reveals a problem where if you've got an RSH1 that isn't working correctly and it's losing gas um, we're just trying to focus on a tiny hole just there and I'll zoom in a bit that little hole there is caused by the thermal trip, the metal casing, rubbing against the pipe uh, during normal operation and that lets all your gas out the system. So if you've got an RSH1 where uh, it can be regassed and it works for a short while and then it stops working, this thermal trip needs moving to see if you've got a hole in the pipe there. It can be repaired, it's not the end of the machine and uh, it's just worth pointing out that if you've got this hole in this refrigeration tube it's usually beyond a DIY repair the uh, absolute repair would be replacing the whole of the evaporator and that is definitely a system engineers job and uh, it'll cost you a few quid but um, it's a repair that is possible now that the new sensor is fitted, we've re-put the uh, thermal fuse back on the aluminium former. It's worth pointing out that the new wire uh, should be just tie-wrapped to keep it in place and away from the uh, uh, workings of the machine. Uh, that's it for the moment. Although we understand there's no gas in the machine, we're going to complete the video with regards to uh, checking the sensor, fitting the new kit, doing the modification and obviously testing the heater while you're there. Part of the modification is when you've fitted the new sensor the original problem of icing damages the foam on one side of the panel and part of the kit is some uh, self-adhesive foam and you can repair the damage um, to the back panel. Uh, you've still got the problem of ingress of moisture into the polystyrene bits so if the back panel is shot then no repair is possible. Part of the modification is fitting some packing pieces to improve the airflow of the back panel. This is one of the packing pieces and it quite simply fits as we're showing in the video just locates into place and on the other side there's a handed piece fits there. With those two pieces in place we will refit the back panel. There we go. Before you fit the back panel just make sure you put the metal shield back into place covering those plugs. And now we need to replace the back panel. Don't forget to plug the two electrical contacts in. Once they're in place the back panel can go back into place and you can see the uh, extension packing pieces that we've fitted and that's it there there's one on the other side of course and four screws to go back in So that's the back panel fitted, everything electrically connected, the heater tested 
and the defrost sensor modification done and the packing pieces fitted to the back panel to improve the air circulation behind that panel and there's a little bit more to do on the modification and we'll move on to that next and we just refit the water bottle two screws and then we have the vents to put back in just at the top of the panel Once they're fitted, that's the inside of the fridge finished. Okay, the final part of the modification is to change the fridge defrost temperature. And we do that by pressing the freezer and the vacation button for 17 seconds. After 12 seconds, you'll hear a ding dong. Ignore that and keep your fingers on those buttons for the second ding dong. There's the first one. There's the second one, that's 17 seconds. So we need to set the temperature first and by pressing that button we can set number 3, 13 and then by pressing the freezer button we set number 3. Now this is now the new defrost temperature settings for the fridge compartment. You don't need to do any more, eventually this will just reset. If you are unsure of what you've done and you go back into this, it will show you two zeros again because it resets and you'll have to do it again. So just do it once correctly and leave it alone, it'll be fine.